An electric motor uses a combination of coils and magnets to produce mechanical movement using electrical energy. But what if instead of mounting these coils in a circle to rotate a shaft, we mount them in a linear line to launch some magnets? This concept isn't a new idea and has been used on a number of roller coasters to accelerate passengers to high speed, often referred to as linear synchronous motors. And in fact, quite recently, a form of linear motor has been implemented onto an aircraft carrier instead of the conventional steam-powered catapults. Now, I'm not entirely sure on the specifics of these launch systems, so let's run through how I plan to build mine. If we position a magnet near a coil of wire and apply a current to the coil in the correct direction, it will create a magnetic field and launch the permanent magnet forwards, at least temporarily, as the magnet will be attracted to the center of the coil. To prevent the magnet from bouncing back, the power to the coil must be disconnected at the exact point the magnet passes the centre of the coil. This needs to happen in a split second, which obviously can't be controlled manually, so we need some electronics to help. For my design, I'm going to use a magnetic sensor called a Hall Effect sensor. This outputs either a 1 or a 0, depending on the nearby magnetic field. So currently it would output a 0, then when the magnet gets close, it will output a 1, which all gets sent to an external control board. This information can then be used to control a MOSFET, which is essentially an electronic switch that can turn on and off really fast by applying a small voltage through the blue wire. This applies current to the coil and the magnet is pulled to the right. Then as the magnet gets close to the center of the coil, the sensor tells the control board to turn off the MOSFET and the magnet is free to continue moving towards the right. So let's build some electromagnets by winding this wire into a coil and by applying some current through the wire we can create a magnetic field. Though in its current form it's not a great electromagnet but by simply adding some ferromagnetic metal to its core in this case just a hardened steel bolt we can greatly increase its magnetic strength. Then we can use a 3D printed bracket to mount it to an aluminium extrusion which will act as a guide rail for whatever we choose to launch. Here is the Hall Effect sensor that detects a magnetic sled and sends a signal to the control board. This will then control the MOSFET on the other side of the rail, which is hidden underneath this custom aluminium heatsink to keep it cool when dealing with high current. Because when this thing launches, it's basically shorting a bank of supercapacitors through the coils, which can exceed over 100 amps of current per coil pair. And considering these coils only use 0.8mm diameter wire, Anything over about 5 amps of current can get pretty toasty. So let's arm the control board and see if it launches. Fortunately because the sled clears the coils in a split second, the coils don't have to endure high current for very long. But I still programmed in a safety time limit to put the launcher into a standby mode in case the sled gets stuck. Keeping the coils turned on and, well, melting them I guess. Now, unlike a slingshot, I can't just increase the distance between the electromagnets and the sled, as the magnetic field greatly decreases with more distance. Therefore, to get this sled moving faster, we need to increase the number of coils along the guide rail, so the sled is always being pulled forward by a nearby magnetic field. So let's take this working launcher and multiply it by, say, 20? Which means I have a long week ahead of winding coils, which I was able to average about 6 per hour. Then CNC cutting heat sinks to keep the MOSFETs cool and lots and lots of soldering. Which, as you can see, turned out to be a bit of a wiring nightmare. Fun fact though, with over 80 turns of wire per electromagnet, there's 3,200 coils on this thing. Which was well worth the effort. Each of these 20 coil pairs works exactly the same as the first coil pair that I demonstrated earlier. Uh, there is a magnetic sensor in between each coil which detects the sled and tells the control board inside of here to apply power from this supercapacitor bank. So to launch the sled all I need to do is arm the system and press the green button. But this wouldn't be a proper YouTube video without launching some household products. Got some good ammo here. <laughs> His eyes are just gonna hit the. Oh no! Right, are you ready? <laughs> Insta cook it in the candle. <laughs> Three, two, one. Oh. 
<laughs> no! Are you sure you're ready? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. You ready? Yeah, go. <laughs> <laughs> How cool it is It's so that? good. Two, one. But unlike lots of other magnetic launchers here on YouTube, having an open guide rail allows for some more interesting launch items. What are you making, Sam? Concorde Mark II. Concorde Mark II. Put it on the launcher. <gasps> wow, look at the wings. Wow, that picked up really quick. That looks so good. There's something rather satisfying seeing a sled accelerate down a guide rail with nothing touching it other than the friction of the rail, all propelled through magnetic attraction. But aside from this probably being the most complex and expensive paper plane launcher, let's talk about its performance. It accelerates the 5 gram magnetic sled to about 11 meters per second, which might not seem very fast, but it achieves this in just over a tenth of a second. That's equivalent to about 8 Gs of acceleration, which is quite a lot for a paper plane. My next plan is to experiment with different magnet configurations, so not only do the coils attract the sled, but they'll also repel it, hopefully doubling the acceleration and increasing its speed. So stay tuned for the next video. Also, have you ever realised my YouTube banner image is actually computer generated? That's right, this image isn't a real photo, and it wouldn't have been possible without a high spec computer or lots of time. Which brings me onto this video sponsor, Micro Center. Micro Center stock all the parts you'll need to build your own PC. Okay, you might not need to create a 3D generated YouTube banner like I did, but even running most CAD softwares can be quite demanding. And once you've finished designing a part, Micro Center can also hook you up with a 3D printer, from large professional grade 3D printers to small beginner friendly models. So you can pick one that matches your needs and stop by their shop and start printing the same day. They also have a large selection of Arduino related electronics, which if you watch my videos, you'll know that I love to use Arduino code to control stuff, such as the exact project you've just watched. Computers for designing stuff, Arduino electronics and 3D printers are basically what all my projects are based around. So head over to Micro Center to find the parts you need via the link in the description, as Micro Center wants to offer new customers a free 128 gigabyte USB flash drive and micro SD card. Thank you to Micro Center for sponsoring this video and thank you very much for watching this video. Thanks to all of my supporters over on patreon.com for making these projects possible and it's probably not a good idea to rub your head on the on the trigger like that. Well, 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 not that end either. Anyway, I'll uh, see you in the next video.